Welcome to Living Word, growing a family that experiences every promise of God. You're listening to another life-changing word from Pastor Jason Anderson. For more information, visit our website at livingwordonline.com. Father God, we lift up this time to you. Ask the Lord that you bless it. Open up our hearts to receive your word. Your word is manna, it's bread, it's daily, it's practical, and we can use it this week. Your word is also seed planted in the good soil of our hearts. It produces change and life and growth on the inside of us. Holy Spirit, be our teacher. Teach us what we need to know. Prepare us for what is coming in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I want to welcome all those who are watching us. Don't forget about our daily Bible study. You can go to YouTube and type in daily Bible study. We'll come up first. We do a morning scripture. We pray over your day. It's Monday through Friday. It's me and my brother. We're talking about the message that we talked about that weekend. And you're going to have a lot of fun with it. I also want to welcome my son, Matthew Anderson, watching us on the stream from Pensacola, Florida. See you tomorrow, bro. (laughs) But today I'm going to be talking to you about fasting. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about God's insight and understanding, his answers coming to you with clarity through the power of fasting. And I, I want to start off by saying I don't like fasting. <laughs> I'm a regular person that doesn't get excited. In fact, when I started writing this message about fasting, I got really hungry. And I, and I, I almost feel like my body thinks that it's going, like a, a bear going into hibernation will pack on extra food and wait. This is me right now. Just, and my wife cooked cookies all day on Thursday while I was writing this message, smelling the house up. Praise God. Isn't that just like life? And yet we're going to talk about the power. Um, the Lord's been weighing on my heart for this, this week in particular as I really started meditating on the fast. As a church, we do a, a fast every year. We've done it. This will be our fourth year doing it. And we have uh, starting January 2nd, a 21 day. And there's different kinds of fasts you can do. Might be abstaining just from soda. Maybe you should be like, you need to go off soda for 21 days. That'd be a really easy one, wouldn't it? But good for you to abstain from that pleasurable food and be good for your health and take the time to pray and think about the new year and find out what God has for you. Might be other people that are going to be more aggressive with it and just do veggie juice only. No matter what, you should always check with your doctor, especially if you have any kind of health condition and make sure that it's safe for you to mess around and do something with your diet. And the Lord just has been weighing heavily. I finally texted Scott yesterday. I said, for some reason, the Lord is telling me uh, a three day or seven day fast instead of 21 days and that wasn't my my flesh wants to say that too so my flesh is in agreement with that (laughs) idea so i fought for a while to make sure god is this really what you're saying and uh the lord was like yes i want three or seven i don't want 21 this year and i i I thought okay so i texted scott you know what do you think about this can you pray about this well he he, i don't think he prayed at all he just (laughs) he just sent back yes some of you, and, and you know, I, I hate to guess why God would do something like that, but of course my guess would be that there would be more of us that could maybe bite off that bit of candy bar. It's not such a big bite. 21 days is a lot, and maybe three or seven this year. That's not to say that next year won't be a little more, but um, yeah, I'm just following the lead of the, the Holy Spirit here. And so on the website and things, it'll be changing to a three or seven day fast, whichever one God gives you the grace for. Yeah, and praise God, not me. Cause I... <laughs> and so uh, today I want to talk to you about getting clarity, insight, and understanding through fasting. In Daniel chapter 9, the Bible says that in the first year of his reign, Darius, I, Daniel, understood, say understood, understood. from the scriptures... Right? So there's understanding that can come from the Word of God, revelation, understanding can, that can come. Understanding is a spiritual insight. Understanding is the heavens were established on understanding. Wisdom is how we founded the earth. So natural things come from wisdom, but understanding is spiritual things. And he understood some spiritual things here. It said from the Scripture. And this is something that God wants to do for us. That when we read the Scripture, we would understand spiritual implications that would impact and, of course, have wisdom as well. And, and so... <clears throat> then he says that he's, he does a, a fast. I want to keep reading. And, and as we get to verse 3, he says, So I turned to the Lord God and pleaded with him in prayer and petition, in fasting. Now, when fasting, when Daniel usually did a fast, he was a 21-day faster. And he would abstain from pleasurable foods. That's what, what, he, what he called it. He would, I would withhold from my body 
foods of pleasure. So he still ate, this is a Daniel fast, but he would not eat the things that he really wanted to eat, the things that were like a crumble cookie or an Andy's custard. I don't think they had Andy's custard back then, but I believe in the Hebrew, the, the Andy's custard was implicated in that desirable food, the forbidden uh, shake. And so in Daniel chapter nine and verse 21, Daniel's been fasting now, and it says, while I was still in prayer. So most of us have fa fasted. Can I just say that? We, we, th we hear the word fasting, and, and a lot of people in, in culture today would go, whoa, what is that? Is that really for today? That's so Old Testament. And the man, well, I, I, I fasted. Whoa, you know, uh, I, I'm not one. But if you were to say, uh, have you ever had a diet? You abstained from something that you wanted, right? And I'm, I bet everybody in this room has dieted at some point. There was something that you couldn't eat. And so a diet is nothing more than fasting without prayer. So if you're dieting, like you're on keto for two months or something, you might as well pray <laughs> and call it a fast because now you're not only getting health, not, it's because everything you do, you have to do by faith. So as I reveal things in God's word, now you add faith to what it is that I'm up to and expecting from God when I fast. And so I want you to see this now. While I was still in prayer, Gabriel, this is an angel of the Lord, messenger of God, the man I had seen in the earlier vision came to me in swift, say swift. So an answer came quickly as a result. Sometimes the answer's not coming fast enough. And that isn't God's fault. God is talking and full of answers. He's already revealed everything to us. It's all in the scripture. It's all available to us. God is not withholding his voice from us. But sometimes we're not able to hear what he's saying. And so <clears throat> the answer came swift to Daniel. It was a quick response. And it says this about the time of the evening sacrifice, and the angel instructed me and said to me, Daniel, I have now come to give you insight and understanding. And so <clears throat> Daniel had some understanding, but when he fasted, then the swift answer of God came to him with not just understood, but understanding, which means it has current and future implications in his life. Understood is something from the past, but understanding is something for now and for the future. And insight, not outsight. Outsight would be my eyes, my physical eyes and what they see. But insight is the heart's eyes. I pray that the eyes of your heart might be enlightened or opened, that you might know the hope to which he's called you, the riches in the glorious saints of God. So. There's eyes, spiritual eyes. I'm, I'm always looking with my physical eyes, but I walk by faith and not by sight. When you got in the Jesus line, you stepped out of a physical world and into a spiritual world. But the physical world is still competing for your attention of your ears and your eyes. And God said, when you, when, 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 see, Daniel starts fasting and what separated him from understood to understanding and insight was the fast. What happened? Clarity came. And we want clarity in our answers. Sometimes we need fire to rain from heaven in order to move what's in our way. We need a miracle. Many times what we're actually needing is wisdom, insight, and understanding. In other words, we need answers. Right? We got questions. We need answers. Pastor, what is God's will for my life? I want answers. God is not hiding his will from you. But we're not hearing it clearly all the time. We need answers. Pastor, I don't know which job to take. Do I take this job or that job? Pastor, I don't know which direction to take. Should I move to Colorado? Pastor, I'm not sure. Is this the right person for me? I'm thinking about getting married, but I don't know. How do I know if this is the right person? We have questions. How do I deal with this teenager? I've tried everything, Pastor. I got a bad report from the doctor, and we've done it all. We stood, we prayed, we fat. We, we, we didn't fat. We, we stood, we prayed. <clears throat> We believed God, we went to the doctor, we did all the tests, we used the anointed hands of the doctors, the diagnosis. I don't know what to do, Pastor. And a lot of times when I find that people say, I don't know what else to do, and they've got the list of all the things that they've done, I find myself, and I talk to my mom and dad about this too, my brother, my wife, Holly, we always find ourselves saying, have you tried fasting? Because fasting can release a swift answer. God's not withholding his answers. But it might be that our ears have gotten cluttered up. The other day, Logan was talking to me and having a great conversation for me while I was driving. He's in the back seat. And my, my wife's right here. And as I'm talking to Logan, having such a good time, 
My wife starts saying, turn left, turn left, turn left, turn left. I poof, right through the intersection, right? It wasn't that she wasn't talking. It wasn't that I wasn't hearing her talk, but I didn't hear her because I was so involved in a different conversation. And in the same way, the world can be so loud that God might be saying, turn left, turn left, turn left, and poof, you go right through the intersection. Why? Not because it wasn't there, but because it wasn't in the moment understood. You needed clarity and focus to hear that turn, that direction. And that is one of the things that fasting can do in the arsenal of a Christian's walk. Esther didn't need fire from heaven. She needed insight and understanding. The Bible talks about her story. She was queen. She had become queen, a Hebrew woman, married to a Babylonian king named King Xerxes. Through a series of beauty contests, she went all the way to the palace, though she was her, both their parents were dead, and she was raised by her cousin Mordecai. An edict had gone forth that in the twelfth month, all of the Hebrews would be slaughtered. This edict was put forward by the, the uh, chief counsel of the king, who wanted all the Hebrews to die, because there was one Hebrew he hated so much, it happened to be her cousin Mordecai. He would walk out of the palace gate, and Mordecai would not bow, would not cower, Everyone else did when this man walked out of the palace gate, but not Mordecai. He would just stand there. He hated him so much, he decided to have the whole entire Hebrew race destroyed. The edict had gone out. It was going to be carried out in the 12th month. Esther was in a dilemma, not only for her people, but she herself being a Hebrew. And the law of that time stated that she couldn't just walk up to the king and address him. He hadn't called for her in 30 days. And anybody who just walked up to the king and said, hey, king! They could be killed. In fact, the law stated that they would be killed unless the king extended a scepter of acceptance. And this king actually had a history of getting rid of the queen. He'd got rid of his prior queen. So Esther couldn't just go marching in there. You know what she did? She declared a three-day fast. She needed a strategy from heaven to overcome this dilemma and save her life, to save her people. She said to her, Mordecai, declare a fast in Susa, a three-day fast, no food, no water. And so at the end of the three-day fast, she had her plan. She went before the king. Difficult thing, but the king extended that scepter. And she, he said, what do you want, Esther? And she said, I'd like you to come to a banquet. I don't know if she was coming up with a food idea because she was so hungry, maybe. She was like, oh, why don't we cook? But whatever happened, spiritual wisdom and understanding came to her on how to move on this king. Why don't you, I'm going to cook some food for you and your chief advisor, Haman. And so that, that uh, next day, of course, he came to the banquet. And he asked her at the end of all this great food, what can I do for you, Esther? And she said, hmm, why don't we do this again tomorrow? I'm going to cook you some great food again tomorrow. You and Haman come to the banquet. Well, that night, <clears throat> Haman, the chief counsel, decided that he was going to have Mordecai, her cousin, executed the next morning. He put up a pole. And so I kind of want you to get a picture that this particular night is a pivotal night in Esther's life. The next morning, Mordecai, her cousin, is going to be killed. And the next morning, she's going to go before the king and face her own possible execution for asking the king for the life of her and all of her, uh, uh, her Hebrews. So... That night, I want you to see this now. Let's look at this in the Bible. That night, the king could not sleep. So he ordered the book of the Chronicles, the records of his reign, to be brought in and read to him. Now, who do you think was keeping him up that night? I want you to see the power of a fast. Not only did she have supernatural insight and understanding brought to her on how to handle an impossible situation, but also everybody involved began to get supernatural insight and information. This king was not a godly man, and yet God was moving and bringing him information. What information did God bring him? Brought him the information of something Mordecai, Esther's cousin, had done for him years ago. Mordecai had uncovered a plot, an assassination plot against the king and saved the king's life. The king woke up and he or got up in the morning. He said, what was ever done for this man who saved my life? They said, nothing. He said, I want him honored today. The same morning that Mordecai was supposed to be killed by the chief council, he was put on a horse and led through the town by the chief consul to give him honor wearing the king's robe. Then Esther goes in and they have the banquet. And Esther says, king, can you just save my life and the people that, I, that my people's life? 
The king said, what are you talking about? He said, she said, Haman, this man right here, your chief counsel, has ordered that all of my people be executed. Well, it got switched up on Haman, how many know? And God had moved and saved the entire nation. But I want you to see this, that when she was in an impossible situation and she needed a swift answer, she called a fast. And suddenly insight, understanding, not only came to her, but the people around her. Maybe you've got like a son or a daughter that's not been living for the Lord. And you've heard this taught before. You've heard Christians say before, you know, God can't change them. They've got a free will. I want you to know and believe God for more than that. I want you to believe that God can keep them up tomorrow night. He can keep them up and have them open up that Bible and start getting new information in their lives. You don't know what our God can do when you start to fast. Maybe you've got a court case and, 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 and the, the judge is under a great deception. But you know what? He might be up all night tomorrow night reading up on the case and finding the exact truth and information that you need to deliver you from the hands of the judge. Come on, somebody. Say amen. Our God is able to move on people around us. What did she do? She declared a fast. And, and my mom and, and dad were deeply concerned for me when I was 14. Uh, they were concerned for my brother most of his life, but I had, I had one. I, I had met a girl and she was bad news for me and I was bad news for her. I don't want you to think that I was the hero and she was the bad one. We were bad for each other. I was like fire and she was like gunpowder. It was a bad situation and it was a, I can tell you from hindsight now that this could have ruined my life. It could have ruined my future. The enemy had set a trap for me and I had fallen into it. And my parents didn't know what to do. They had tried everything. They had forbidden me to see her, forbidden me to talk to her, but I could sneak out. I could find ways to get on the phone with her. They, nothing they had, they had done was able to stop me and this girl from having a relationship. And they were at their wits end. And my mom said, I decided we would need to fast. And so she, she and my father fasted for three days for me to get out of this relationship. At the end of three days, my uh, grandpa, Grandpa Fiore, had come in to visit. And uh, he, he was staying with us, and my grandpa Fiore, my, my mom and dad were holding a picture they had gotten from my bedroom on the wall. We used to have photos instead of on your phone. It was, <laughs> it was a printout for you young people. We would print them. <laughs> and so they had gotten the photo from my wall, and I don't know if they were praying, I don't know what they were doing with it, but they had the photo, and my grandpa came in and he said, what's that photo you're looking at? And they showed him, and, and he just immediately, he, he just immediately looked at it and he goes, well, that's the wrong girl for him. You better get him out of that relationship. I don't know how he knew, but he just knew. And they said, well, we've tried everything. We don't know what to do. And my grandpa Fiore, you have to keep in mind that he is a full-blooded Italian who grew up in the Bronx of New York. You want me to get rid of her? I called Jimmy to take care of everything. My dad's like, well, we don't want anyone to die. He's like... All right, nobody dies, but we can still do this. And, and he had a plan, and he, and he began to articulate the plan, and God spoke through him. It was like he was the angel Gabriel giving them the swift answer they need. They did the plan, set me free, it worked, and two days after I got set free, I was able as a young 14-year-old to look back on it and go, you guys just saved my life, didn't you? They set me free. What happens in a fast? See, God's not withholding his answer from you. You have questions here today. Some of you, do. you don't know how to deal with that uncle. You don't know how to deal with your mother-in-law. You don't know how to deal with the boss. You're not sure what to do with that teenager, your marriage. You're not sure what to do with your husband, your wife. You need answers. You need godly insight and understanding for your situation. And God has a swift answer for you. He's already talking to you. God isn't up there like playing around thinking, well, if you'll fast, then I'll finally give you your answer. He's already spoken to us. But you need to know this. The flesh is loud. It's who we used to be. Your body, your world around you, it is very loud. It's telling you who you are. It's telling you what you want. It's telling you that you're discouraged. It's telling you that you're angry. It's always telling you what to do. It tells you what to eat. We all know that one. And the flesh, if you leave it unchecked, it becomes so loud, it will occupy all of your ear and all of your eyes. Everything that you see and everything that you hear, it wants to command your full attention, the flesh does. The Bible says that the flesh is contrary to the spirit. 
The spirit is who you actually are now. When you got born of the spirit, the flesh is who you used to be. The spirit is who you are. The flesh will be over here and say, well, this is who we are and this is what we do and this is how God made us and this is what I want, so do what I want. But the spirit over here says, no, you're who I used to be. You were crucified in Christ. Nevertheless, I live, not you, but Christ living in me. That might be a lot of information for somebody here today. They're like, what are you talking about? Yeah, when you chose to believe in spirit, you, in Jesus, you became born of the spirit and you were crucified at that time, the flesh. It doesn't get to own you anymore. When you fast, you're saying to your flesh, shh. But I want, I want white bread. No. But you always do what I say. Shh, you're not in charge of me right now. And what happens is the noise starts to quiet down. I was listening to the candlelight service rehearsal. They were loud, it was loud. And I got a FaceTime call from Matthew at the same time. I want you to know that I ran out of the room to hear what Matthew had to say. Because if I'd have stayed there, I'd have never been able to hear what he was saying to me. In the same way, God is calling you on FaceTime. Sometimes we got to run away from the flesh so that we can hear what God's saying. It wasn't that he wasn't talking. It was that the flesh was drowning him out with the distractions of what it wants. And when you fast, you're saying no to the flesh. You're not the boss of me. It'll impact every area of your life. In Luke chapter 4 and verse 1, Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, he started his ministry after being baptized. The Spirit of God descended on him like a dove, and a voice from heaven was heard saying, This is my Son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Jesus hears from heaven that he is the, the God's Son. He walks out into the wilderness, and the Bible says, Where for forty days he was tempted by the devil, he ate nothing during those days. That's hardcore, forty days no food. He fasted. You see, Jesus has called us to follow him. And he was showing us when I start things, I start with a fast. You know, Jesus said, I only do what the Father does. I only say what the Father says. Jesus had complete clarity of what God's plan was for his life. He always knew what city to go to next. He knew when to move next. He knew when to pray next. He had complete clarity of what God was up to. And he fasted for 40 days. And during those 40 days, he was saying no to the flesh. Now, he's Jesus. I sometimes wonder, you probably didn't have to fast for 40 days. But maybe he was showing us what he wants us to learn. That when you start things, when you start things with a fast, it brings clarity of what God is trying to say to you. And the devil said to Jesus, if you are the son of God, turn these stones into bread. And Jesus said, man does not live by bread alone, but on every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. They're talking about feeding the flesh or the spirit. That's what they're talking about. Am I going to feed the flesh? Bread, turn these stones into bread. That's what Satan wants. He wants you to feed the flesh. But Jesus is like, I'm going to feed the spirit because man lives on the word of God. It says here at the end of 40 days, go back to this other scripture. I want you to see this. At the end of 40 days, he was hungry. Well, of course he was. He'd not eaten for 40 days. Really, what was he hungry for? When, when you fast, it's amazing how quickly you begin to get hungry for the things you actually need to be hungry for. You know, sometimes we say, well, you know, reading the Bible, it's like a chore. When you're fasting, reading the Bible isn't a chore. Your spirit starts to have a voice and your spirit desires what the spirit desires. The spirit loves to be in God's presence. The spirit loves to hear the word of God. The spirit isn't interested in the body's addictions. The spirit wants to do what the spirit does. And there is a happiness and fulfillment that comes from being hungry for the things of God and not the things of the flesh. And at the end of 40 days, he was hungry. And I believe that if you want to stir up a hunger on the inside of you, make your flesh hungry because the spirit is going to start eating what God has and that's the kind of food we need to get into our lives into our marriage into our jobs into our world somebody give the Lord a hand clap right now in Luke chapter 5 and verse 34 sometimes people say oh, pastor oh, fasting that's so Old Testament do we still fast today check this out Luke chapter go go there now 5 and verse 34 Jesus answered 
So they asked Jesus, how come your disciples don't fast? The Pharisees asked him that. And he said this, can you make the friends, or in other words, the disciples of the bridegroom, which is Christ, can you make the friends of the bridegroom fast while he is with them? Now, what he means is by with them is like literally standing there. Like, I'm here. These are my disciples. Would you make them fast while I'm here? And then he says this, but the time will come when the bridegroom will be taken from them. He goes up to, he ascends into the heavenlies. Now, he's here with us in spirit, isn't he? Same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in me. But it's not the same as when he was here, here. Like flesh. I could just look at him, shake his hand, talk to him, sit down and eat with him. Because I live according to the flesh. You do too. We all do. We walk around, shake each other's hands, sit down, eat, whatever. We hang out. We t hear each other's stories. We get to know people that way. Right? Because I can see you face to face. And so he says this, but the time will come when the bridegroom will be taken from them. In those days, they will fast. So we're in those days. That's these days. Because he's seated at the right hand of the Father. So why make this connection? Like, why, why draw out this? Like, if you knew, why would they fast while they're right here with me, right? Let's say this is Peter, my disciple. I'm, but I'm Jesus, but I'm not. But he's in me, so why not? And so he's like, he's like, hey, I know Peter. Peter and I hang out together. Well, he didn't need to fast. We can see each other. We talk to each other. We're like bros. He can know me in a real way because we're here. I don't, he doesn't need to fast. But when I'm gone... And 2,000 years later, Ted gets born again, and he wants to know me. Like it says in 2 Peter chapter, two and, or chapter 1 and verse 2, it says, Grace and peace be to you in abundance through the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ and through Father God, knowledge of Father God. So in other words, knowing Christ is the access way to grace and peace being in my life in abundance. So grace and peace and God's promises come to me by faith, but through knowledge. Through knowledge of what? Through knowing who Christ is. And so Jesus was saying this. He was saying, when I'm here, we can know each other physically. But when I'm gone, if you want to know me with clarity, if you want to know me in such a way that it was though I were sitting across the table from you and hanging out with you, if you want to know me where you can see me in a real way, I can tell you the way that they're going to have to do it. It's going to come through fasting. Woo! That make a fellow want to skip a meal. People are like, well, I want to know Jesus in a deeper way. One of the things that we can do is go on a three-day fast, a seven-day fast, and get hungry for the things of God. And I want you to see that, you know, confusion comes, and we don't really hear from God clearly, and we need that answer that we need. You know that Jesus... I don't really see him fasting after this 40-day fast. Once that clarity came, he was clear. The confusion doesn't come back. You just level up into that new clarity. When I, when I was becoming a singer, I would, my ears were tone deaf to pitch. And so my vocal coach had me training my ears by singing and playing scales on the piano. Right? Over and over again, scales. Na, 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 na. Over and over again. Up and down, up and down, up and down. And what, what she was doing was she, was she was honing my ears to hear the individual notes with pitch. And as time went by, how far off I was from the note, I might be here, began to correct. Why? Because I was able to hear more acutely and clearly what the note actually was. But once I stopped doing scales, I didn't stop hearing clearly. Once I gained access to a better pitch and a better tune, it stayed there forever whether I did scales or not. And then I got a little tighter and a little tighter, a little tighter. In other words, once Jesus gets the clarity, he didn't need to fast again because two weeks later, he didn't have clarity. The clarity went away. No, when you fast for three days or seven days or one day and that new level of clarity comes, that level of clarity is cumulative. You will keep that level of clarity forever. It won't suddenly get confusing and you can't hear God again. You now hear him more clearly than you used to. You go into another. See, my parents are addicted to fasting because every time they fast, they stepped into a new level of clarity. My dad sat down in his room at his office and he drew these domes almost to the square foot. Just sitting there with a compass and a ruler, he drew this building. How could he possibly have had that kind of clarity over what God wanted to do? It's because he had spent so many times in fasting and prayer. 
He had clarity of hearing what God was trying to, to, to do in his life. Do you see that? It's cumulative. You don't lose it. You try fasting even just one day coming up in January, and you're going to see a difference in your life. Jehoshaphat was facing all the Midianites, and he didn't know what to do. This great army was attacking Judah, and he didn't even have an army. He declared a fast. After he declared the fast, here comes the prophetic word to him. Here's how you're going to defeat the enemy. Gave him the insight and the understanding for the strategy that he needed. I was reading a story about the American Revolution. The English had really owned Boston Harbor for a great deal of time. And, and they would bring their ships in and supply their armies. And they had cut us off from having any kind of supply at all. They were owning us in the war because of that Boston Harbor. So on March 4th of 1776, George Washington had an idea. I'm going to set up some cannons on Dorchester Heights, which is south of the harbor. They won't be able to get us, but we'll be able to just rain down them as, as much as we want. and We can take the harbor back. Well, General Howe of the English was down in the harbor, 11,000 troops, tons of English ships holding that harbor, spotted them on the 5th. I see what they're up to. It was going to take about two weeks to assemble all those cannons up there on Dorchester Heights and get everything settled. There was no way that the English wouldn't attack. They were going to attack and destroy what their plan was. It would have been easy for them. General Howe immediately began to devise a plan to attack this fortress that George Washington and his crew were building. George Washington on March 6th declared a fast. We don't find that in our history books, young people. They probably don't talk a lot about it, the fasting and prayer that George Washington did. But he declared a fast for the entire nation, for the entire army, for himself, for everybody. He said, on March 7th, we will dedicate this day to the Lord, to the holy sacraments, to the duties of our God, and we will not eat. No one eats on that day. March 7th. On March 8th, just before General Howe from the English launched his attack to defeat what George Washington needed about 10 more days to build, on March 8th, a storm blew in. It only affected the harbor. It didn't affect Dorchester Heights at all. It stayed there. It was so intense they could not attack, and it did not lift until March 17th when George Washington and his crew had finally completed the Dorchester Heights fortress. When the Storm lifted, and General Howe saw the establishment was done. He retreated all the ships out, all 11,000 troops out, and America regained the harbor. And I want you to see that it was the fast of a great man declared that made the difference. That answer came swiftly. See, fasting not only brings clarity to you, but it'll throw the enemy into confusion. It'll bring a storm right into the enemy's camp. What does the Bible say? Your enemy will be defeated before you. In Deuteronomy chapter 28, he will come to you in one direction, but he will flee from you in seven. Why? Because he's the one that gets confused. And there was a demon-possessed boy that the disciples couldn't cast the demon out. It was stuck in there. And the disciples came to, the, to Jesus and said, how come we can't cast this one out? We've cast lots of demons out. And Jesus said, this kind comes out through prayer and fasting. When things get stuck, you might just be a small fast away. Jesus didn't have to skip meals that day. He had done his 40-day fast already. He was already operating in the power of the spirit and authority that would be necessary to cast that enemy out. When we're stuck with something, when things are not moving, you might be up against some kind of stronghold that needs a breakthrough from our God. And I can tell you when you're up against something, you've tried everything and nothing's moving, try a fast. When Heath Anderson was born, my brother's second son, he couldn't keep food down. He kept just spitting it up. After about a week, he had lost a ton of weight. He only weighed three pounds. They'd been to the hospital many times, but the hospital kept sending him home saying, your son's healthy, just keep feeding him. He wouldn't eat. He would eat, but it would just get thrown up, spit up. They checked him into the hospital when he was at three pounds, and the doctors began to run tests. They had no idea. We don't know. We've tried every scope. We've tried every scan. The baby was dying, and there was nothing they could do to stop it. My brother said this, he said, I'll not eat until my son comes home. When my brother declares a fast, let me tell you, all of heaven begins to tremble. <laughs> oh, Pastor Scott's fasting. It's on. 
And the next morning after my brother declared that fast, that doctor walked in and he said, I think I know what it is. It came to me early this morning. He ran one quick little test. He said, sometimes a very rare condition can happen where the esophagus of an infant has, ne has, has some kind of seal. It's been sealed from, from birth, from the forming of the womb. There's, it doesn't go all the way through to the stomach. So he did a simple procedure to open that up. And that baby went home the next morning, healthy and strong and gaining weight. He's still here today, works at the Living Word Bible Church, oversees our evangelism and our marketing. That's Heath Anderson. When things, amen, that's my Jesus too. When things get stuck and you need insight and understanding, try a fast. And I declare over you today, if you will learn this simple concept, bring clarity to your life that you might try a fast pastor I'm gonna try it then I decree and declare over you today that wisdom insight and understanding will come to you with clarity from God it'll come to you swiftly and God will bring answers and information not just to you but to the people around you everyone involved in this event that needs a solution the right information is coming into your lives I decree and declare over to you that the solution is on its way and that God is going to give you the exact answer you need that you might step into all of his goodness and his victory that he has for your life in Jesus name and if you believe it shout out I believe it amen thank you so much for joining us today and we're gonna to continue this conversation on our daily Bible study you can go to YouTube and type in daily Bible study we're the number one daily Bible study in the world on YouTube and we're going to continue this conversation. We do a morning scripture. We pray every day. It's maybe 10, 12, 15 minutes long. Yeah. Subscribe to it. You're going to love it. We've got our Married for Life book out there. You know, me and Holly found out that, you know, what destroys relationships? Fights. And you know what? There's a way to get in and out of arguments in less than five minutes and get rid of 98% of all the fights that are going on out there. So, you know, imagine if you got rid of all those fights. Well, how do I do that? How do we get rid of the dumb fights and then be able to get in and out of fights in five minutes? And if you enjoy my stories, every chapter has some of me and Holly's dumbest fights. We fought <laughs> over potato salad, flip-flops. I love it. You name it, we have. And so you can get this on Amazon. Just type in Married uh, for Life and Scott Anderson. You see all the books that I have. We want to spend a moment, and if you're watching this and you're not saved and you don't know where your eternity is going to end up, it's so simple. You know, it's not about rules. It's not about religion. It's not about following a set. It's all about believing. If you believe in Jesus Christ, you're saved. Simple, easy. Say this prayer after me. Believe in your heart and you have it. Everybody say, Dear Father, I ask you right now, come into my life. Be my Lord and be my Savior. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for all of my sins and was raised from the dead. I believe that Jesus is the Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. You're saved. Amen. Well, if you want, we would love to have you partner with us in what we're doing. You know, this word that Pastor Scott's preaching, it's going all over the globe, the daily Bible study as well. And you can be part of what we're doing around the world. So I just encourage you, visit wakeuptv.tv. You can donate right there and join the team of believers that are making a difference. And if you don't have a church home, find one. It's so important to a great life that you are planted in the house of God. The Lord. Remember that this is the day that the Lord hath made. Come on, let's rejoice and be glad in it. See you next time.